one, the only beggar. On a beautiful day, there was a group of beggars lying around, basking in the sun and praying for themselves. Some wished to become rich, some wanted to marry a wealthy spouse, and others prayed to be more talented. Among them was a Jewish beggar who also looked up to the sky and prayed. Hey, someone asked him, what are you praying for? I wish I was the only beggar in this city. The lesson learned. To achieve different results, you must first think differently. If you want something you've never had, you must do things you've never done. Thinking precedes action. Every action reflects your mindset, and good results prove that your thinking is excellent. The reason why the Jewish people could become one of the wealthiest nations in the world is because they can overcome conventional thinking, avoid the beaten path, and follow a different route. 2. Guard Dog Story In a shop opened by a person, they advertise that their dogs are excellent at guarding homes. A customer who had bought a dog came back angry after some time, complaining, I bought this dog from you to help guard my house. But last night, someone broke in, stole $200, and the dog didn't even bark. The shop owner explained, Its previous owner was a millionaire, so it didn't think $200 was worth barking over. Lesson learned. Management principles are timeless, but they are not one-size-fits-all. Depending on different perspectives, people may interpret principles in various ways. Not everything applies in every situation. This is true for business management principles as well. 3. Selling Garlic A Jewish merchant took two bags of garlic to a foreign place where the locals had never seen garlic before and really liked it. So, they offered to trade two bags of gold with the merchant. Another trader heard about this and brought two bags of green onions, thinking the locals might not have tried green onions before. Surprisingly, the locals found the green onions tastier, but felt gold was not enough to show their appreciation, so they gave him two bags of garlic instead. This short story mirrors business dealings, doesn't it? It shows that the one who discovers a business opportunity first can make a lot of money, while what the follower might end up with could just be garlic. Only by excelling in your own path can you take the road that others have not taken. 4. Selling Geese A Jewish businessman visited a village to buy geese, offering $100 per goose, which was a fair price compared to the market rate of around $1.80 at that time. A local who raised 130 geese sold 100 of them to the businessman for a total of $10,000. A few days later, the businessman returned and offered a higher price of $300 per goose, almost four times the market rate. The delighted villager quickly sold the remaining 30 geese to him. Hearing of this, the other villagers rushed to sell all their geese to the Jewish merchant. This time, the merchant bought a total of 1,000 geese, spending $300,000 in total. About a month later, the businessman came back, announcing he was willing to pay $1,000 per goose. But by then, there were no geese left in the village. One villager found a new goose farm in a nearby town selling geese for $1.700 each. Although pricey, each goose could still net a $1.300 profit if sold to the Jewish businessman. Thinking this, the villagers quickly bought 1,100 geese from the farm at $700 each, hoping to sell them to the businessman for a higher price later. However, when the businessman returned, he only offered $60 per goose, claiming the market was down and geese were hard to sell. The villagers, hoping for a big profit, refused to sell at this low price. Unbeknownst to them, the businessman and the new farm were partners, inflating the goose prices before selling them back to the villagers at inflated rates. The 1,100 geese at the farm were originally sold by the villagers, only to be bought back at exorbitant prices. Lessons learned. 1. Be open and ready to take risks. 
We may not agree with the behavior of the businessmen and villagers in this story, reflecting the darker side of human nature. However, it reminds us that we can't always stick to old ways and rigid thinking. Risk and opportunity go hand in hand. To seize opportunities, one must be willing to take risks. 2. Act swiftly at the right moment. If given another chance, the villagers would likely sell all their previously bought geese at a high price to the Jewish businessman, avoiding loss. Unfortunately, there are no what-ifs, and missed opportunities don't come back. Greed is bottomless, and failure to act at the right time can lead to disastrous outcomes. 5. The Baked Goods Game in a certain market, there were only two sellers of baked goods. Let's call them Seller A and Seller B. Both of them sold the same number of goods, and they were free to set their prices since there was no price control. They could easily break even by selling each item for just dollar one. Initially, their business wasn't going too well, but then both A and B decided to play a game, and that's where the real business story began. Seller A spent $1 to buy a baked good from B, and in return, B also spent $1 to buy one from A. Then A spent an additional dollar two to buy another one from B, and B did the same. This back and forth continued until a passerby, let's call them C, noticed that the price of the goods had skyrocketed to $1.60 each. The trick here was that as long as A and B had an equal number of goods, neither of them actually made or lost money, but their assets value increased after revaluation. An hour later, C came back and was astonished to find the price had doubled to $120, prompting them to buy one without hesitation. At this point, C became both an investor and a speculator in the baked goods market. In stock market terms, C would be the investor, while those setting the baked goods prices would be akin to stock valuers. Driven by the money-making allure of these baked goods, more and more passers-by started buying them, drawing even more people into this business saga. 6. Thinking differently about a problem. A Jewish man walked into a New York bank, approached the loan desk and confidently sat down. The loan officer asked, how can I help you today? While asking, the loan officer noted the man's attire, a classy suit, high quality leather shoes, an expensive watch, and a diamond studded tie. I'd like to borrow some money. Of course, sir. How much would you like to borrow? Just one dollar. Only one dollar. Yes, just one dollar. Is that possible? Absolutely. As long as you have collateral, you can borrow more if needed. Would these be acceptable as collateral? As he spoke, the Jewish man pulled out a stack of stocks and bonds from his elegant leather wallet and placed them on the loan officer's desk. The total is $500,000. Is that enough? Definitely, but are you sure you only want to borrow $1? Yes, that's correct. The man then took the $1 bill. The interest rate is 6% per annum. As long as you pay back the borrowed amount plus interest in a year, we will return these stocks to you. Thank you. The Jewish man then prepared to leave the bank. The bank manager, who was standing nearby, watched in amazement and could not understand why someone with $500,000 would come to the bank just to borrow $1. Curious, he approached the man and asked, Excuse me, sir. I'm really puzzled. With $500,000 in hand, why would you only borrow $1? If you wanted to borrow $300,000 or $400,000, we'd be more than happy to accommodate. No need to worry about me. Before coming here, I inquired about the cost of renting a safety deposit box at several banks, and they were all very expensive. So, I've decided to leave my stocks here. The cost is incredibly low, just $0.06 for a year. Usually, valuable items must be stored in the National Treasury safety deposit boxes, which for many people is the only option. 
However, Jewish individuals often don't limit themselves to conventional methods and look for unique ways to secure their stocks and other valuable assets in the bank's safety deposit box. In terms of reliability and safety, there's not much difference between these two methods, except for the fee charged. Typically, when people use collateral for a loan, they hope to pledge as little as possible but still borrow the maximum amount possible. For banks, wanting to ensure safety and profitability in lending, they will never lend an amount too close to the actual value of the collateral. Therefore, there's usually an upper limit to how much one can borrow, but no lower limit is set. This is a matter that the borrower must manage themselves. Finding a way through this loophole, changing one's way of thinking about the problem, is the brilliant intellect of the Jewish in thinking. Knowing how to change the way one thinks about problems often leads to more opportunities for success. 7. Gold Rush In the mid 19th century, vast gold mines were discovered in California, USA, promising huge profits for those who mined them. The news spread quickly, attracting a large number of people. The weather in the gold mining area was extremely hot, and the gold miners could only drink clean water at night. At this time, Yamer, a 17-year-old Jewish farmer, also joined in. He didn't find gold but saw an opportunity to sell water. With his intelligence and courage, Yamer opened a water shop to make money. He used unique methods to generate significant revenue. Specifically, he brought clean water from nearly a kilometer away to his store, then filtered it to purify. Afterward, he packed the water into bags and buckets and delivered it to the gold miners. This way, Yamer made a lot of money. The story reflects how Jewish people identify opportunities, seize them, and make money, offering us deep insights into entrepreneurship. Innovation can open new paths and bring unexpected fortunes. The business success of Jewish people cannot be separated from their passion for knowledge and their continuous effort to learn. Their family culture places great emphasis on education. Parents help their children develop a learning concept from an early age, encouraging them to believe that education is the most important thing. In business, only continuous innovation can break the existing models, find the market's weaknesses, and propose products that meet consumer needs, thereby earning huge profits. Like Yamer, although his dream of mining gold did not materialize, he found another way to make money by opening a water shop. This water-selling mindset of Jewish people is recorded in the Talmud, this book not only teaches people about interpersonal relationships and business practices, but also describes educational methods for the next generation. 8. Paul's Chicken Flock There was a farmer named Paul who raised a flock of chickens. One day he panicked, cried, and sought help from a neighbor. My chickens suddenly died, half of them because of the flu. What should I do? The neighbor asked, what have you been feeding them? Paul answered, grains. Then switched to wheat. The next day, Paul came running back saying, it didn't work, 15 more died. The neighbor asked, what have they been drinking? Paul answered, cold water. Then switched to warm water. The following day, Paul, feeling defeated, said, nearly all of my chickens are dead, only ten are left alive. Where did you get their drinking water? From the well. Switch to purified water, it's much healthier. Finally, Paul in despair. The last one just died. The neighbor sighed. That's too bad. I had many more suggestions to share, but I never got the chance. Lesson learned. Change should be based on core principles and aimed at the real issue. Changes in business should be made step by step, based on existing values and what is already working well, rather than rushing to abandon them. Changing the appearance cannot change the heart, and changing the heart cannot change the entire flow of blood.
The important thing is to accurately identify which part is problematic and address it. Otherwise, no matter how much you change, it won't be effective. 9. Businessmen in Prison Three men were serving a three-year sentence in prison. The prison guard promised that each could make one request. The American, addicted to smoking, quickly asked for three packs of cigarettes. The Frenchman, a lover of romance, requested the company of a beautiful woman. The Jew asked for a phone to contact the outside world anytime. After three years, the American walked out of prison with the three unopened packs of cigarettes, constantly shouting, Give me a light! Give me a light! It turned out he forgot to ask for a lighter. The Frenchman left the prison with the woman, each carrying a child and another child on the way. The Jew came out last, shook hands with the prison guard in gratitude, and then stepped into a luxury car waiting outside. Thanks to the phone, he continued to invest and do business with the outside world, achieving great success and amassing a considerable fortune. The moral of the story, choices determine fate. The past choices of a business determine its present achievements. The current choices of a business will decide its future growth. With each different choice, people face different destinies. 10. Game Thinking Mindset The Jewish people have a famous saying in the Talmud, Money is not sacred, it's not unreachable. From their perspective, money is merely a useful tool, like clothes. Many Jewish tycoons control fortunes of tens of millions of dollars but have never felt the psychological burden of their wealth. They describe their mindset as follows. Earning money is entering a game world. As a player, you must constantly compete against your opponents. As long as you outperform everyone else, victory will ultimately be yours. The financier Morgan adhered to this viewpoint. Regarding investment, he always said, In poker, carefully watch each player. You'll identify who's taking advantage of you. If you can't, then you're the one being taken advantage of. As a millionaire, Morgan enjoyed making money but never lived for it. While others spent on luxury cars and homes, he meticulously studied the conditions of the stock market at the time. A perplexed colleague asked him, Why do you work so hard when you're already so wealthy? Morgan replied, For me, money isn't important. The real joy comes from the process of earning it, constantly taking on new challenges. Seeing money as something ordinary and making money as a pleasure, this game-thinking mindset is a capability of Jewish entrepreneurs. Cao Duong, the glass industry mogul from China, once said, Don't overvalue money. It's there to be explored. Treat the process of making money as a game. By continually fighting monsters and leveling up, you can tackle each issue at hand. Immersed in the process, you forget about gains and losses, letting go of vain glory. When you surpass the game, money is merely a reward for your victory. I've heard it said that the essence of wealth is the realization of thoughts. Those who only think without acting will merely watch wealth pass by. When you break out of your thought cocoon and see the world beyond your blind spots, opportunities to make money will appear. The Talmud states, Thinking allows you to see things and opportunities that others can't. If you're currently impoverished and can't find a starting point to break this situation, first change your mindset and learn to think like a wealthy person. When you shift your thinking pattern and surpass your own cognitive limits, wealth will naturally come to you. Hey everyone, your comments truly matter, offering insights and motivation to others and uplifting our creative team at Lighthouse of Wisdom Channel. Sharing your thoughts and experiences enriches our community. So, let's get the conversation started below and help illuminate our path with your wisdom. 11. Three People Who Buried Money For 2,000 years, living in various parts of the world, 
Jewish people have faced persecution and expulsion numerous times, yet they've always maintained their distinct identity. This resilience is closely linked to their understanding of money, a lesson ingrained from birth. For Jews, money is a double-edged sword. They recognize that while it can sustain life, it also has the potential to consume and corrupt the human soul. Therefore, they view money as a mirror reflecting a person's character, revealing both greed and generosity. Here's an intriguing story about the Jewish perspective on money and why, despite being scattered around the globe, Jews have often been among the most successful and wealthy. One Sabbath, Saturday, a day of rest and worship in Judaism, during King Solomon's time, three Jewish men traveled to Jerusalem. Finding it inconvenient to carry their wealth, they decided to bury their money together along the way before continuing their journey. However, one of them stayed behind, unearthed all the money, and took it. When the others discovered the theft the next day and suspected one of them but lacked proof, they sought King Solomon's wise judgment. Instead of immediately addressing their issue, Solomon presented a dilemma of his own for their input, promising to resolve their matter afterward. Solomon narrated a story about a village girl engaged to a man whom she left for another love. She offered compensation to her fiancé for breaking the engagement, but he, valuing her happiness over money, declined it. Later, the girl was kidnapped for ransom by an old man. She persuaded him to release her without payment, citing her fiancé's generosity. After the story, Solomon asked who among the girl, her fiancé, and the kidnapper acted most admirably. The first man praised the fiancé's generosity in not seeking compensation. The second commended the girl's courage to pursue true love. The third questioned the old man's decision to release the girl without payment. Solomon immediately identified the third man as the thief, noting that unlike the others who focused on love and character, he only thought about money. This Jewish tale highlights how one's attitude towards money reflects their character. A greedy person is consumed by wealth, lacking moral principles, while a noble person values integrity over financial gain. Jewish life often judges a person's character based on their relationship with money. Thus, a Jewish proverb states, Money has no name, no lineage. They believe that as long as wealth is earned through one's business acumen, it should be proudly accepted without shame. 12. Regaining Peace and Quiet Shock a 70-year-old retired Jewish gentleman spends his days relaxing in his garden, enjoying his retirement. However, his peace is disturbed daily by three noisy children playing, affecting both his and his neighbor's lives. Instead of getting angry, he cleverly says, I enjoy watching you kids play. I hope you come here every day, and I'll give each of you one dollar daily. The kids, thrilled about getting money, happily continue to play there every day. A few days later, Shaq tells them, I'm sorry, my income has decreased. From tomorrow, I can only give you 50 cents each. The children are slightly disappointed with the reduced amount, but reluctantly agree. A week later, he gathers the children again and says, my pension hasn't arrived yet, so from now on, I can only give you two cents each day. At this point, the children refuse, saying, We won't hang around for just a few cents. We won't do it. Ultimately, the children decide to leave, and Shaq's peaceful retirement days continue. Shaq's opponents were three stubborn, willful children. He realized that forcing them to leave would only make them more determined to stay and bother him. So the wise, retired Jewish man took the opposite approach. He made them want to leave on their own, achieving his goal. In any situation, understanding human nature is the key to success. 13. Wheat Mindset There's a saying in the Talmud, Wheat can be given to a tenant farmer as seeds, but the wheat used as seeds cannot be eaten. 
What does this mean? Jews believe that wheat, like seeds, must be sown into the soil to take root, sprout, and produce new wheat. Turning it into flour for bread is simply consumption and doesn't create value. In other words, if you waste your principal money, you'll never escape poverty. Only by learning how to make money can you truly become wealthy. Rockefeller believed in this from a young age. After graduating from high school, he borrowed $1,000 from his father, started a company with friends, and managed to accumulate some capital. In 1860, he was interested in the oil industry, but the oil prices were too high. He analyzed the market situation and decided to wait for the right opportunity. Three years later, when crude oil prices dropped to 10 cents, he believed the time for the seed to sprout had come. So, he sold his current company, bought a large amount of oil refining equipment, and quickly made a lot of money. After becoming wealthy, he didn't spend his earnings on consumption, but continued to use it as principal money and invest in new oil refining technologies. By doing this, he gradually expanded his business territory, monopolized the U.S. oil industry, and became the world's biggest oil businessman. And the wheat he planted over the years finally yielded a high return. Buffett has two life principles. First, always remember to keep your principal money. Second, always remember the first rule. For us ordinary people, our time and opportunities to make money are limited. Seeing keeping our principal money intact as the first principle, our capital can continuously accumulate. Let your money roll like a snowball and wealth will continuously come to you. There are no shortcuts to making money. Once you can maintain the continuous growth of your principal money, you're on your way to becoming wealthy. 14. The Jewish Boy and a Dollar Jewish people believe that only with the right attitude towards money can one turn small money into big money. On his way home from school, Wade saw a sign by the road, Lawn Mowing Help Wanted, One Dollar. He thought to himself, I have free time every weekend. Why not use that time to mow lawns? After thinking it over, he politely knocked on the door, and a kind elderly lady with white hair answered. Wade respectfully asked, Ma'am, are you looking for someone to mow your lawn? The lady kindly replied, Yes, dear, I need someone to mow this lawn. I'd be happy to help, ma'am. I'm free every weekend. Thank you, but are you sure? I can only pay one dollar, the lady added. Yes, ma'am, don't worry. No matter how much you pay, I'll make sure the lawn looks great. With that, Wade and the lady agreed, and he happily went home. That evening he told his father about it, who praised him, saying, You're a hard-working boy, and we're so proud of you. Jewish people do not distinguish between small and large amounts of money because every coin has its value. They believe that the right attitude towards money can turn small money into big money. Like Wade in the story, even if it's just a dollar, he tries his best. In reality, Jewish people are quite calm about money. They consider it a normal thing not to be judged by whether it's earned rightly or wrongly. Legitimacy comes from how one earns their money, and as long as it's earned honestly, any amount is commendable. Therefore, even for a dollar, Jewish people will try their best. When raising their children, they constantly teach them this concept. Below, we'll understand more about their attitude towards money. 1. No bias in business. Jewish people live all over the world, and although their nationalities may differ, they always consider themselves kin and maintain close relationships. Moreover, wherever they are, they want to be known as wealthy people. They are confident in themselves because they have a valuable business experience. There is no bias in business. Jewish people believe that the nature of business partners does not differ fundamentally. As long as the business is conducted correctly and money is made from the transaction, it can be completed.
The purpose of business is to make money, and as long as it's done legally, anyone can be a business partner, regardless of their skin color or ethnicity. Jewish people do this to teach their children that there is no discrimination or prejudice in business. 2. Small money is big money. Almost every Jewish parent tells their child not to distinguish between small and large amounts of money, as large sums are made up of small ones. Therefore, small money is essentially big money. Moreover, while some may think that Jewish people view money as their life and are greedy, they remain calm, unangered, and clear-headed. They believe that as long as money is earned legally, even a dollar is worth earning. Earning money is legitimate as it results from hard work and yields results. With this belief, Jewish people think a truly smart person is not only knowledgeable, but also wealthy. Most money-making methods come from one's superior intelligence, and intelligence without practical application is dead intelligence. Therefore, the Jewish community rarely praises a learned but poor scholar. They value intelligent, knowledgeable, and wealthy individuals. Additionally, parents often tell their children, the marketplace is a battlefield. On that battlefield, heroes are judged by success or failure. And success or failure is determined by whether you are smarter than others and can use your intelligence effectively. Therefore, when educating their children, parents focus on instilling the right money values and emphasize the importance of applying these values in real life. 15. The power of smiling. Psychologists believe that the smiles of teenagers can predict their ability to earn money as adults. They found out through research that teenagers who often smile tend to earn more than 10% above the average at the age of 29, while those who smile less earn up to 30% below the average. This means that people who smile more tend to make more money. Jewish tradition sees this as a guiding principle and writes in the Talmud, a smile brings a wealth of riches. In a book, there's a salesmaster named William Wyra who makes millions of USD a year by selling life insurance. His secret to making money lies in his always cheerful face, which customers find hard to refuse. However, this smile is not natural but the result of hard work. After facing rejection from customers time and again, instead of getting discouraged, he would go home and practice smiling brightly. To achieve the best results, he surrounded himself with pictures of smiling famous people and bought a large mirror to adjust his expression at any time. By doing so, he gradually mastered the essence of the smile and developed his million-dollar smile. He believed that a smile is not just an expression, but also a mindset. People who think with a smile are more likely to get closer to customers and benefit from them. Donald Hilton once said, A smile is the simplest, cheapest, and most achievable service. More importantly, a smile is the lowest cost investment, but yields the highest return. In this world, Every business activity is a value exchange between people. With a bright smile, individuals can leverage their strengths and gain the favor of others. Regularly smile at others, and they will be willing to pay for your value. Smile more and use it as a power to enrich yourself, and you will soon become wealthy. 16. Reverse Psychology Gary Shacker, an elderly Jewish man, bought a simple house near a school after he retired. It was quiet for a few weeks, but then three young men started hanging out nearby, kicking trash cans and making a lot of noise. Unable to bear the racket, Gary went outside to talk to them. He said, You guys seem to be having a great time and I enjoy seeing you so happy. If you come and kick this trash can every day, I'll give each of you $10. The young men were thrilled and put even more effort into their antics. However, three days later, Gary sadly said, Inflation has hit my income, so from tomorrow I can only give each of you five dollars. 
The guys were a bit disappointed but agreed to Gary's terms. They continued their trash can kicking routine. A week later, Gary told them, I haven't received my pension lately, sorry, but I can only afford to give each of you two dollars now. Two dollars, one of the young men exclaimed, turning pale. We're not going to waste our precious time here for just two dollars. We're done. And from then on, Gary lived his days in peace. Moral. Young people might react negatively to direct commands, often doing the opposite of what's asked. Utilizing reverse psychology by confronting them in such a manner, one might achieve their desired outcome. 17. Where did the squirrel go? A renowned Jewish man, instead of just talking about abstract theories from books, once shared the following story with some young people eager to achieve success in business. Three hunting dogs were chasing a squirrel when it darted into a hole in a tree. The tree hole had only one entrance, but soon after, a rabbit emerged from it. The rabbit sprinted forward and climbed another tree. However, in its panic, the rabbit lost its footing and fell right onto the heads of the three hunting dogs looking up, making them dizzy and disoriented. Eventually, the rabbit managed to escape. After finishing the story, the Jewish man asked, Is there anything wrong with this story? Rabbits don't climb trees, a young person objected. How could one rabbit hit all three hunting dogs at the same time, making them dizzy? Another young person questioned. It wasn't until they could find no more issues that the Jewish man pointed out, There's one thing you all missed. What happened to the squirrel? Moral. The goal is the most important thing. Everything should be centered around the goal. Only by focusing all your attention on that goal can you achieve success in your career. However, many people in their career development often focus all their attention on intermediate targets like the rabbits, thereby leaving their original goals far behind. 18. Instinct Descendants of Jewish heritage, the Brown family, including Mr. and Mrs. Brown and their children, live in a small house near London. Sometimes Mr. Brown comes home very late, after his wife and kids have already gone to bed. He quietly uses his key to open the door and enters the house. A key aspect of management is managing people. It's an art that involves getting others to work for you. One evening, when he came home late and lost his key, he had no choice but to stand in front of his house and ring the doorbell, but there was no response from inside. He rang the bell again, but still, there was no movement inside. Mr. Brown, having no other option, knocked on the bedroom window and shouted for his wife, but she didn't wake up. Finally, Mr. Brown paused for a moment then covered his nose with his hand and in a childlike voice said, Mom, I need to pee. Even though he spoke very softly, Mrs. Brown quickly woke up. Insight. The essence of management is people management. It's an art of getting others to work on your behalf. In managing a company for different situations and with different people, it's crucial to get them to help you handle tasks well. To do this, all you need to find is the right approach that resonates with them. 19. Using Creativity and Assets Many years ago, in the Auschwitz concentration camp, a Jewish man told his son, Our only asset right now is our intelligence. When others say 1 plus 1 equals sign 2, we have to figure out how to make 1 plus 1 equal sign 3. The Nazis poisoned and killed hundreds of thousands of people in Auschwitz, but only this father and son, both Jewish, survived. In 1946, they moved to America and started a copper business in Houston. One day, the father asked his son, How much does a pound of copper sell for? The son replied, 35 cents. The father said, Right. Everyone in Texas knows the price of a pound of copper is 35 cents, but as the son of a Jew, you should say it's $3.5. Dollars. 
try making a door handle out of a pound of copper. Twenty years later, after the father passed away, the son ran the copper shop by himself. He had made many copper drums, medals for the Olympics, and he once sold a pound of copper for 3,500 U.S. dollars. At that time, he was the chairman of the McCall Company. However, what really made him famous was a pile of trash from New York City. In 1974, the U.S. government wanted to refurbish the Statue of Liberty and got rid of old scrap metal, calling for bids nationwide, but months went by with no takers. The man, being in France at the time, flew to New York immediately after hearing the news. Seeing the heaps of copper, screws, and wood piled up under the Statue of Liberty, he signed his name without hesitation. Many transport companies in New York laughed at his foolish act. Because the city had strict waste disposal regulations, and being careless could lead to lawsuits from environmental organizations. Just when people were mocking the Jewish man, he began organizing workers to sort through the scrap. He melted the copper to cast a small Statue of Liberty, processed the concrete and wood into supports, and turned lead and aluminum scraps into keys for the American Square. He even packaged the dust swept from the Statue of Liberty to sell to flower shops. In less than three months, he turned that pile of scrap into 3.5 million U.S. dollars, increasing the price of each pound of copper by exactly 10,000 times. It's not that Jews are born smarter than any other race. It's that they know how to create invaluable gold coins. 20. Swimming Beyond Fear In the past, at a Jewish school, a teacher took his students to a small bay for a swimming contest on a calm day. He told the strong and skilled male swimmers to compete in swimming out to sea to see who could swim the farthest. Some boys immediately jumped into the water and started swimming, while quite a few hesitated and stayed on the shore, not taking on the teacher's challenge. The Jewish teacher followed the brave swimmers in a large boat through the clear sea waters. After swimming less than half a mile, the boys, who were initially good swimmers, started quitting and climbed onto the teacher's boat. They all felt exhausted and couldn't swim any further. The teacher just smiled and continued rowing the boat further from the shore. About a mile from the shore, the teacher suddenly stopped the boat and ordered all his students to jump out and swim to shore immediately because the boat was about to sink. Seeing the boat heavily loaded and seemingly about to sink, the students quickly jumped into the sea and swam to shore without looking back. The teacher slowly rowed the light boat, maintaining a distance to observe and assist if needed, but without letting the students know the boat was still afloat behind them. Later, all the students safely reached the shore. The teacher then came ashore to meet his students and asked each group why they didn't participate. The students who were afraid to swim said they felt overwhelmed by the vast sea and didn't know where to swim to, so they gave up right from the start. The teacher asked the students who had bravely swam out why they stopped early due to exhaustion, but managed to swim a much longer distance back to shore, despite being tired. The students said that swimming from the shore to the open sea, they felt scared due to the vastness of the sea, and the teacher's boat behind them was like a tempting lifeline. So they quickly felt exhausted and gave up. They gave up more out of fear than exhaustion. At that time, the teacher's boat was a much safer option than continuing to swim aimlessly. But when swimming to the shore, despite being further and tired, they could make it because the familiar shore ahead was a safe destination. Seeing the shore ahead, they swam more eagerly and reached their goal very quickly. After hearing the students' responses, the Jewish teacher said, As you've just experienced, the shore is a clear goal. When you have a clear goal in sight, all of you were able to swim a long distance with ease. The clear goal in sight gave you strength, perseverance, and belief to overcome difficulties. Moreover, when you swam to the shore thinking the teacher's boat was sinking, you couldn't rely on the boat anymore, only on your remaining strength, so you swam all out to make it. 
Having a clear goal and no way back or any other support, you relied on yourselves and reached the destination spectacularly. Whereas, when you swam from the shore to the endless open sea, not seeing a clear goal ahead, you quickly fell into confusion and gradually became desperate. Without a clear goal to strive for, you easily gave up. Surely, at that time, you all thought you had tried your best, and that was all you could do. Today, the sea is calm. We are in the bay. So there are no big waves to hinder you when swimming out to sea, and no tailwind waves to help you swim faster to shore. But you all managed to overcome a much longer distance than the one you thought was your limit not long ago. A clear goal is the difference. It helps us overcome all fears and surpass ourselves to conquer difficulties extraordinarily. With a clear goal to strive for, all difficulties become minor. When working without a goal, even small tasks become insurmountable challenges. 21. Three ways to be generous. 1. Generosity in benefits. The Talmud, a Jewish book of wisdom that compiles texts from Jewish masters over more than 10 centuries, tells us letting go of personal gain for a while is a smart way to gain even more. Jewish wisdom teaches that being stingy, thinking we're always right, and believing we're getting more benefits than others only leads to poverty and a lack of opportunities to make money. So let's be generous with benefits. This counterintuitive approach can change your life. Sometimes, flipping an obvious solution on its head reveals better ones. In making money, investing, and starting businesses, we shouldn't just focus on immediate benefits but plan for long-term growth. Occasionally, we might need to give up some benefits now to gain more in the future. This requires a broad vision a deep understanding of issues, and a commitment to long-term development. Being generous with benefits not only helps you make money quickly and accumulate wealth, but also builds trust with others and opens up many opportunities. 2. Generosity in Asking Questions Persistence and diligence can make your life ten times more effective, says the Talmud. Jewish education emphasizes the importance of asking questions, seen as the key to solving problems simply and easily. Whether learning or working, we should always be eager to ask questions when we don't understand and thoroughly research issues to avoid superficial thinking. By continuously exploring and questioning, you'll develop logical thinking, enhance your awareness, and solve problems more easily. Conversely, if we're too lazy to ask questions or explore, we'll miss out on chances to expand our intelligence and opportunities for business and making money. 3. Generosity with Knowledge – Reading Lots of Books A Jewish proverb says, The fastest and only way to make money is to read books. Education and knowledge are highly valued in Jewish culture, emphasizing the importance of reading and learning. In today's information age, reading is a habit that helps many people expand their thinking, increase awareness, and intellect. Daily reading not only broadens our understanding and changes our perspective, but also improves our thinking and expression skills. Additionally, the Internet now serves as a high-quality source of knowledge. We can read books, listen to lectures, and take online courses to develop personal skills. Being generous in reading and acquiring knowledge will broaden your future, enhance your competitive edge and creativity. Moreover, reading improves emotional intelligence, leadership skills, and the ability to maintain the best personal relationships. 22. Six Rules for Wealth Building 1. Capital is for investment, not for spending. According to the Talmud, a cornerstone text for Jewish culture, there's a saying, Wheat can be shared to become seeds but should never be entirely consumed. This age-old wisdom teaches that capital should be used to generate more wealth rather than being wasted. 
John D. Rockefeller, a notable figure of Jewish descent, embodied this principle from an early age. In 1858, with only $800 of his own and a $1,000 loan from his father, 19-year-old Rockefeller did not spend this dollar $1,800. Instead, he used it to start a food company with a friend, marking the beginning of his venture into the business world. By 1960, when oil was discovered in Pennsylvania, Rockefeller seized the opportunity and entered the crude oil market. Within a few years, he had established several oil refineries, eventually owning the world's largest. He understood the challenges of managing a vast empire in a fiercely competitive market, so he paid top dollar for expert consultants and merged companies to form a dominant conglomerate, controlling 80% of the U.S. refining industry and 90% of its oil pipelines by 1884. Over 26 years, Rockefeller transformed a $1,000 loan into a vast fortune, a testament to his strategic use of capital. The smallest of funds, he showed, are but seeds that must be allowed to sprout, not consumed. 2. Avoid negative associations. There's an old saying, you are the company you keep. Your personality, mindset, and abilities can be influenced by those around you. If you're surrounded by complainers or those who do nothing, you might unwittingly adopt their negative traits. Successful people understand this and distance themselves from negativity early on. We can filter out extreme or negative relationships from our lives or limit our interaction with such individuals as much as possible. 3. Understand money generates money. The Talmud, a lifelong study for Jewish people, teaches not to expect saving alone to lead to wealth, but to understand that money generates money. The Jewish culture does not advocate for mere savings. Instead, it highlights the importance of investing as a pathway to success. Even in times of poverty, one must learn to save and invest allowing their wealth to grow substantially. 4. Be interesting. Jewish wisdom suggests, with humor, everyone can be happy. Given their history of oppression and isolation, Jewish people have long relied on humor to maintain a positive outlook amidst adversity. When faced with challenges, sharing a laugh or using humor to comment on the situation can provide relief. This approach is something we can all learn from. Facing difficulties with a smile can make obstacles seem less daunting and life more enjoyable. For instance, if an employee makes a significant mistake at work, instead of dwelling on the problem or considering termination, offer encouragement humorously. This seems challenging, but I believe you can master it with more effort. To cultivate a sense of humor, maintain a positive and optimistic attitude. If you're laid off, for example, reassure yourself. This is an opportunity for freedom and growth elsewhere. 5. Success has a formula. When feeling helpless or negative about life, people often seek help from others or rely on luck. However, mindset is crucial. The basic formula for life and work success is Result equals sign mindset plus passion plus skills. Kazuo Inamori believes that our key to success lies in our abilities, a hard-working attitude, continuous learning, and reflection to achieve great results. It's not just about skills. Other aspects are equally important. 6. The wisest learn from each other. It's a poor habit to constantly find faults in others and complain or criticize. Instead, learning from each other's strengths to overcome our own weaknesses can significantly enhance our capabilities. Focusing on others' faults can lead to negative self-perception. If you persist in this behavior, you'll find yourself stuck in a cycle of regression. Jewish tradition emphasizes the inheritance of wisdom with every child studying the Talmud to grasp its intelligent teachings. 
It's no wonder that American steel magnate Carnegie once said, I don't need money or diamonds. Just a Talmud is enough. It's the secret to success and wealth. 23. Three things to turn a blind eye to. A Jewish saying about raising children suggests that in times of disaster, everything can be abandoned except for intelligence. This highlights the Jewish awareness of the importance of intellect. According to Jewish wisdom, a smart person should avoid doing the following three things in life. 1. Don't be curious about the future. Many of life's troubles are self-inflicted, stemming from overthinking about money, gains and losses, and fearing potential future events, leading one off course, diminishing courage and faith. It's like bringing troubles upon oneself. Uncertainty about the future troubles many but human happiness often comes from this very uncertainty as it represents hope. Because hearts fear suffering, people fear pursuing their grand dreams, feeling undeserving or incapable. Yet, not realizing that fearing suffering is more painful than suffering itself, no heart has ever suffered when in pursuit of dreams, inspired by The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. There's a story about a young man desiring success who was given a magical watch by God, allowing him to speed up time at will. He achieved everything he wanted quickly but lost his youth in the process, regretting not enjoying the happiness of striving. Happiness comes from the pursuit of it, not the satisfaction of achieving it. To Jewish thinking, living well in the present naturally leads to a good future, whereas worrying too much only adds to one's troubles, making things worse. 2. Don't test people's intentions or borrow money from friends. The Talmud, a central text in Jewish wisdom, mentions that lending money to a friend is a sure way to lose that friend. Cao De Wang, a prominent figure in China's glass industry, also said, If they're not your friend, don't lend them money. If they are your friend, definitely don't. What you lend is money. What you get back is animosity. Jewish wisdom advises against borrowing money from friends as it often leads to not getting the money back and losing the friendship. Reality has shown us through observed events how financial dealings can turn relatives and friends into enemies. So, to maintain lasting relationships, we should avoid monetary loans. 3. Don't judge a person by their background. Long ago, some Jews couldn't find work due to illness or disability and had to beg. Thus, Jews do not equate intellect with social status. Even beggars are respected for their intelligence. Today's society often judges by appearance and background. People tend to associate with you based on how much money you appear to have, as seen in movies and TV shows where rich characters pretend to be poor to test others' sincerity. Jews value intelligence over wealth. Heroes come from any background, and beggars are respected alike. 24. Reflecting on oneself. There's a story in the Talmud about a merchant named Rodel. Rodel worked as a salesperson at a company. Once the company tasked him and some colleagues with promoting a new type of soap. At first, the orders were disappointingly few. His colleagues blamed the poor market or complained that the company's brand was too small. Rodell took a different approach. Every time a sale failed, he would think, is it because I don't know enough about the product? Maybe my pitch isn't convincing enough? Or am I not enthusiastic enough? For this reason, he bought a notebook to jot down his shortcomings. Every night, he would read through the notebook. Gradually, he became more familiar with the product and improved his sales skills. Through constant reflection and improvement, his capabilities grew and his work performance improved. Eventually, he became the vice president of the company. The poet Hein wrote, Self-reflection is a mirror that shows us our mistakes and gives us the chance to correct them. When facing mistakes and failures, learn to look inward so you can see your own shortcomings and then fix them. 
If you can't do what you want, first, ask yourself why. Look for the reasons within yourself. Be introspective, and from there, you'll be able to grow outwardly. 25. Never stop learning. The Talmud records that every Jewish child from a young age is asked by their parents a question like this. If one day your house catches fire, do you know what you should take with you? Some kids answer that it's money, while others say it's diamonds. The parent shakes their head and hints, what if it's something that doesn't have a shape, color, or smell? If the child can't answer, the parents reveal the answer. My child, what you need to take isn't money or diamonds, but knowledge. Knowledge is something that nobody can take from you. As long as you're alive, knowledge will always be with you. Chinese journalist and entrepreneur Luo Zhen Yu says, Lifelong learning is the only way to fight against dying at 30. Only by continually recharging your brain can you keep yourself on the path of endless development. 26. Be smart. Know when to push and when to pull. In the Talmud, there's a story about a person trying to get into a room. No matter how much they pushed, the door wouldn't open. Why? Some thought the door was locked from the inside, others guessed the lock was broken. But all these answers were wrong. The real reason? The door needed to be pulled, not pushed to open. Often, we're stuck in old ways of thinking, and that stops us from solving problems, leaving us at a dead end. A comic artist once said that good grades are like a bronze medal, skills are like a silver medal, but the ability to think differently is the real game changer. When you hit a dead end, try thinking in a new direction, and you might just find a new way out. 27. Being efficient over just being hardworking. For Jewish people, patience is the key strategy for dealing with challenges. In the process of being patient, you can take the time to fully analyze the strengths and weaknesses to consider the best approach, accumulating strength and resources to wait for the right moment to advance. Making money is actually a skill that can be learned. To master this skill, you need to understand the following three mindsets. The book, The Talmud, The Essence of Jewish Wisdom, reveals that Jewish people truly become wealthy through these three mindsets. Instead of just working hard to make money, first, you need to transform yourself into someone who can make money. With these three mindsets, you will step-by-step step move closer to wealth and a better life. 1. Sometimes you can't just use a key to unlock a lock. Jewish belief holds that no problem is unsolvable. Jewish businessman McCall ran a copper shop inherited from his father. However, surrounded by many similar shops and with copper prices stuck at 35 cents, it seemed impossible to raise them to 40 cents. But McCall found a way not only to sell copper at a higher price, but also to sell out quickly. How did he do it? McCall manufactured door handles, locks, and other daily items out of copper, while others saw copper as a raw material, McCall saw a market for manufactured copper products, earning profits a hundred times higher. Later, McCall even partnered with watch companies to supply them with manufactured copper products, making a fortune. By choosing this unique path, you can avoid the fierce competition of the market while seizing the biggest opportunities in your field. By breaking free from conventional thinking, Stepping out of your comfort zone and looking at problems from a new perspective, you always find a solution. If you can think of solutions that others can't, you can earn money that others can't. So, how do you differentiate yourself? First, think differently. For example, if your boss assigns you a task that seems difficult to everyone, don't consider it impossible. Instead, think about how you can make it happen. From there, you'll find a method. 
When Stephen Schwartzman, a Jewish founder of Blackstone, first worked at Lehman, he used this idea to quickly raise funds in his first battle. 2. Slow down when you face difficulties. For Jewish people, patience is the strategy for dealing with difficulties. By being patient, you can take time to thoroughly analyze the pros and cons to consider the best approach, accumulating strength and resources to wait for the right moment to advance. For example, if you have a boss who unreasonably criticizes employees, if he criticizes you once and you retaliate, you might get fired quickly. Instead, you shouldn't waste time and energy arguing with him, but quietly learn and improve, eventually surpassing his level. Who knows, in the future, you might become his leader. Even if you don't get the chance to become a leader, you can still change jobs with the skills you've accumulated every day. Either way, the outcome won't be too bad. This is an effective way to turn the situation around. 3. It's not just about making a good product. You need to know how to promote it. According to Jewish business experience, not only do you need to make a good product, but you also need to know how to promote it to make money. Observing Jewish business practices, you'll see they never get rich by cutting prices or making small profits but high turnover. In Jewish eyes, blindly lowering prices is not only unfair to customers who paid the full price, but also reduces the value of the goods in the eyes of customers. Therefore, to make money, you need not only focus on creating a good product, but also learn how to promote and operate it. For instance, when you think of diamonds, many people immediately think of a timeless and expensive gemstone. It became an object of desire because Jewish people set its high price. So the next time you want to sell a product or apply for a job, put more effort into promotion. Let more people understand your value, recognize you, and be willing to offer a high salary to have you work for them. Even if you regularly do a good job without a focused and logical presentation, it can be difficult to earn favor from leadership. Everyone wants to succeed and make more money. However, hard work isn't the only way to make money, and it's not even the most efficient way. With the right mindset, you can take effective steps towards wealth, reaping rewards commensurate with your efforts. 28. Six Ways to Get Rich 1. Getting Rich Through Adventure Getting rich is a long journey we set out on and accomplish. For Jewish people, getting rich through adventures is one of the special and effective ways. If you want to get wealthy, you need to be brave enough to face risks. Jewish people believe that the greater the risk, the greater the reward, and that wealth is the result of taking risks. We must be prepared for various situations in business. If we always stay in our comfort zone, we will only have a peaceful and comfortable life without breakthroughs, learning many lessons, and achieving outstanding results. 2. Getting Rich Despite Hardships In life, we face many challenges along with favorable factors. Especially in business, we need to be strong to face difficulties and overcome adversity. Jewish people believe that before fortune grants you the crown of success, it often tests you harshly to see if you are resilient enough. If you have a strong will and quick wits in getting rich, you will surely receive a deserving outcome. 3. Optimism in Wealth Building In any situation, if people are always negative and fearful, it's hard to succeed. Whether the path to wealth is challenging or smooth, a smile on your lips and a relaxed, optimistic spirit are essential. In wealth building, Jewish people believe that starting a business with positivity and building relationships is a skill for success in business and wealth creation. 4. Flexibility in getting rich The acumen and intelligence of a businessman are crucial. If you are someone with flexible thinking, ready to make innovative decisions to turn the situation around, you will definitely be closer to success. 
If challenges make you scared and confused, not knowing how to handle them, then you are a loser from that moment. Once you start a business, getting rich, you need to plan for various situations that may arise and know how to quickly turn things around if something goes wrong. The market will continuously change. If people don't know how to handle emerging issues, it's hard to get rich. This is also something Jewish people have learned over time. 5. Getting Rich Through Information Jewish people believe that those who are not yet wealthy simply lack the plans and methods to get rich. Among these, information and knowledge are key to unlocking the door to success and wealth. Jewish people always value knowledge as it is an invaluable asset without limits for humans. Every day, we need to learn new things, accumulate more experience and knowledge to grow and become more proficient. From practical knowledge, we can grasp business opportunities and effective wealth-building methods. We should actively learn from everyone through all means and then draw lessons for ourselves on the path to conquering success. 6. Always Valuing Money Jewish people believe that only when humans value money will money come to them. Therefore, they respect the effort and results they make, always planning their spending wisely instead of wasting it. This is also a way for you to always have money for emergencies. So if there are any business problems, you can proactively solve them. 29. Jewish Parenting Techniques 1. Valuing Intelligence and Learning Jewish parents place a high emphasis on education from a young age, encouraging their children to develop their intellect and cultivate knowledge. They teach their kids effective learning strategies, instill a love for books, and encourage engaging in conversations to absorb as much information as possible. Learning is seen as a lifelong journey, so parents continually motivate and support their children to self-educate, embracing knowledge from school, communication, and everyday life. Jewish children may sometimes appear disheveled with untidy clothes and hair and even a bit dirty. This is because their parents believe that maintaining a neat appearance is secondary to the freedom and learning opportunities that come from play and exploration. The priority is for the kids to be comfortable, happy, and unconcerned about their looks. 2. Learning from Failure Jewish children are often encouraged with the phrase, always move forward. This mindset helps them to independently develop, take on tasks, and learn about success, confidence, and failure from an early age. Parents allow their children to take risks and step out of their comfort zones to explore the world, tackle challenges, and achieve success. While they don't do things for their children, Jewish parents are always there to monitor, encourage, and support, helping them to persevere towards their goals. 3. Encouraging with Trust Encouragement is crucial in making a child feel valued in their family and society. However, Jewish parents tend to avoid common methods like giving gifts or fulfilling every desire. Instead, they encourage their children by trusting them, which reinforces the idea that they are doing well and should continue to excel. Assigning tasks and responsibilities helps children understand their important role within the family and society. 4. Acknowledging Effort from the Start A well-known Jewish saying, Kol Hashalat Kashat means all beginnings are hard. This reflects the understanding that no new endeavor is easy. Jewish parents recognize and value their children's efforts, encouraging independence and perseverance. They support their children's new hobbies and ideas, no matter how unconventional or unsuccessful they may seem. 5. Parents as leaders, not centering the child. In Jewish families, children are taught to respect their parents from a young age. Parents are seen as the leaders and children are not the focal point of attention. Children learn that to achieve their desires, they must put in the effort themselves. 30. Five key factors for success. 1. 
Information is the most important factor in business. Before the technology boom we see today, information became a crucial element for businesses, influencing many aspects. Having the latest, most accurate information as quickly as possible can lead to unexpected success. However, over 100 years ago, Jewish people already understood the importance of information. They believe that in business, information is even more important than ample finances. A company with abundant financial resources can easily cycle capital, but if it's slow in capturing information, it might not develop and could eventually fail. A famous saying recorded in the Jewish book Talmud goes, even with the wind, one must use their nose to smell or take various measures to find its source as soon as possible. Jewish billionaires and entrepreneurs pay great attention to business information. This is an opportunity for them to grasp market trends and make the most accurate plans for their businesses. It is by always updating information early that they have succeeded after overcoming many difficulties, becoming globally influential. Philippe Yammer, the director of Yammer Meat Processing Company, has a habit of reading the newspaper and following the news daily. This helped him learn about the plague in Mexico. To confirm whether this was accurate, he sent people to Mexico to investigate, learning that a large-scale plague outbreak was occurring. Philippe Yammer believed the epidemic would impact the business market, affecting both California and Texas. Since these two locations are major meat suppliers in North America, an outbreak would disrupt meat supply, affecting the market and driving meat prices up. Therefore, he decided to gradually stock up on food and sell meat at high prices, making over 9 million USD, approximately 212 billion VND, in three months. Although this business move later sparked various opinions regarding human ethics and hoarding food supplies, it also became a significant business lesson for Jewish people, highlighting the importance of information in business. 2. Don't be greedy, plan for the long term to make more money. In this world, there's no such thing as a free lunch, nor is there an easy opportunity to make money. Many people's mistake is being too greedy. They only see the immediate benefit without considering the long term, leading to downfall and failure. So stay level-headed in business, plan for the long term, and calculate all risks to best prepare for any situation. Business isn't an easy journey and becoming wealthy overnight isn't common. Therefore, don't look for shortcuts to success. Be wise in creating many opportunities for growth, staying away from dangers and pitfalls. 3. Don't discriminate based on occupation or social status. In ancient times, agriculture was valued and commerce was suppressed, leading to merchants being looked down upon despite their wealth. However, society now greatly differs. Merchants who make a lot of money are respected by society. Jewish people have always had a unique perspective on occupations and social status. They candidly believe that no profession is superior or inferior as long as you live well, not committing illegal or unethical actions. Thus, in Jewish society, people freely make money without any psychological burden. This mindset has helped Jewish people quickly become successful and wealthy. 4. Make money through opportunities. Succeed through reputation. No matter how much money one has, without a good reputation and engaging in actions against moral and ethical standards, they cannot be considered successful. Making money depends on opportunities. If you seize them, you'll be well off. However, whether a person is successful largely depends on their reputation. Jewish people believe honesty and integrity are crucial human virtues. If one sacrifices their conscience for immediate gain and loses the respect of others, that's failure, not success. They hold the belief that honesty is golden. With honesty, it's easier to find partners, and honesty helps retain customers, expanding the business and increasing profits. 5. 
Earn money righteously and avoid illegitimate gains. Illegitimate gains won't lead to success but will push you towards the brink of failure. Remember, money is everywhere, and making money is straightforward if you use your mind, strive, and persist. There are thousands of ways to make money, and you should choose the most effective method for yourself. Focus on one field, set goals, and work hard towards them. 31. 12 Classic Business Stories Everyone should hear once in their life. Business is not a one-day affair. It involves going through numerous hardships, challenges, and difficulties. During your business journey, there might be times when you feel like giving up. That's when you should read the following classic business stories. These 12 real-life business tales might seem lofty at first, but they are actually very simple and can be easily applied to your life. However, to see results, you must commit to this practice every day until you master it. Story 1. The Contest for a Son-in-Law A girl's parents held a contest to choose a son-in-law. One man boasted about his million-dollar account. Another bragged about his two-million-dollar mansion. The parents seemed impressed. Then a third man said, I have nothing but a child, currently on the way with your daughter. Lesson. To outdo your rivals, sometimes you need an ace up your sleeve. Story 2. The Art of Upselling in America. In the U.S., there's a clever sales tactic. At a 7-Eleven, you find two packs of Budweiser, one with 12 cans for $1.17 and another with 18 cans for $1.18. Without much thought, you grab the 18-can pack. After the purchase, you realize you bought more than usual. Budweiser's sales skyrocket just because of this pricing strategy. The 12-can pack is merely a sales prop. This is known as upselling with a combo. They give customers the illusion of choice, but none of the choices mean not buying, because we prefer to choose rather than feel we're being sold to. Story 3. The iPhone 7 Storage Dilemma With the iPhone 7, only 32 GB, 128 GB, and 256 GB versions are sold. Given that 4K photos and videos quickly fill up storage, the 32 GB is too small and a 64 GB would be ideal, but it doesn't exist. Thus, most end up upgrading to the 128 GB version for an extra dollar 100, naturally boosting Apple's sales. This is called upselling with raving fans. For fans, money is no longer the issue. Story 4. Upselling at KFC. At KFC, when you order fried chicken, the staff will suggest adding a small Pepsi for an extra fee. Then they always ask if you'd like to upgrade to a larger size for just a little more, and the larger size is significantly bigger. Naturally, you agree to the larger size. This is known as cross-selling. The easiest time to sell something is right after the customer has agreed to the first purchase. Remember, McDonald's trains its staff to simply ask, would you like fries with that? and they sell an extra 4 million kilograms of fries every day. Story 5. The Fable of the Predators and the Goats Three predators, a wolf, a bear, and a fox, kept harassing a herd of goats. The lead goat suggested appointing one of the three as their leader. The herd was outraged, but the fearsome trio was delighted. They started fighting for leadership, and eventually the fox tricked and killed the wolf and the bear. But then it could no longer harass the goats alone. Lesson. Be careful when you hear you're about to become the boss. Story 6. A Test of Time. A young man loved a girl since she was 15 or 16. They dated secretly, defied their families, ran away from home, and threatened to end it all if not accepted. If their relationship lasted a year, it was deemed illegal and could lead to court. If it lasted three years, it was seen as a forbidden love. If it lasted six or seven years, it was recognized as true love, 
overcoming all obstacles to be together. Lesson. What you do isn't as important as how long you can keep doing it. Story 7. A Tale of Perception Once, a woman who worked in the nightlife, if she was with a sailor or a worker from another town, was labeled as a societal issue. But if she was with a wealthy and famous businessman, she was admired as a glamorous figure. And if she was with a sports star or a celebrity, she'd make headlines, sharing her career stories and pictures without facing any backlash. Lesson. What you do isn't as important as who you're with. Story 8. The Tale of a Little Bird. A small bird flying south for the winter froze and fell into a large field. While lying there, a cow passed by and dropped manure on it. Surprisingly, the manure warmed the bird and it felt happy and began to sing. A cat, hearing the bird, came over, found it in the manure, pulled it out, and ate it. Lesson. Not everyone who dumps on you is your enemy. Not everyone who gets you out of a mess is your friend. Story 9. The Fire at the Public Bath A public bathhouse caught fire due to an electrical fault, causing many people to run out into the street without being able to dress. The smart ones didn't cover their bodies. They covered their faces. Lesson. Focus on the core of the issue. Story 10. Creative marketing in South Korea. It's said that South Korean men remain vibrant into their 70s, leading to a high consumption of condoms. However, buying condoms, especially at an older age, could be embarrassing. To address this, pharmacies started packaging condoms with bath soap as a gift, so customers could discreetly ask for soap and get what they really needed without embarrassment. Interesting lesson. Understand not only the needs, but also the behaviors of your customers, and find creative ways to meet those needs by deeply understanding their cultural and social habits. Story 11. The Lunch Break. Wish, a salesperson, an administrative assistant, and a manager went for lunch and found an antique lamp. Rubbing it, a genie appeared and offered each a wish. The assistant wished to be in the Bahamas, and poof! She was gone. The salesperson wished for a beach in Hawaii with endless amenities. And poof, he was gone. The manager wished for both to return to work after lunch. Lesson. Always let the boss speak first. Story 12. The Restroom Solution. A janitor was frustrated by the mess in the men's restroom. To solve the issue of spills on the floor, the company posted a note above the urinals, Missing the bowl means you're short. Spilling outside means you're downhearted. The next day, the restroom was spotless and carelessness was no more. Lesson. Clearly and impressively show customers the problem to change their behavior.